Yeah. Many thanks. I'm very glad to have the opportunity to speak here. Many thanks for your introduction. How can we actually uh, understand my topic, components of a regional drought monitoring system? Drought is an extreme event. Maybe this is the correlation with your general topics. Uh, we speak about more or less uh, precipitation and uh, lack in precipitation and high temperatures may actually lead to droughts and so maybe it is a kind of extreme event. So we are now speaking about the development of a regional drought monitoring why or, or dryness monitoring. So why do why are we doing this? There are dryness and drought portals which are offered and are not considered uh, sufficient uh, by users, not sufficient for our region, and that is why there is a general need in a more detailed, more specific system. What do I mean by components? What do we need in order to set up a monitoring system for measuring dryness and drought? First of all, which is our motivation? Which are the user groups, the stakeholders, the parties interested? What are their ideas and um, interests? We made a kind of survey. Uh, restrained number of samples. I'm going to speak about it also during my paper. Then which index, which model should we use in order to actually come to an extreme event, to extreme dryness and extreme consequences of a drought situation. In order to define, we now approach a c category which we could name uh, strong dryness or heavy dryness or high dryness or even drought. What should be the category? Should we call it drought? Should warnings be um, issued to the public? Which are the which it's more or less arbitrary for the moment when actual warning, a warning system is um, triggered. And so we should measure that with the consequences. But then we should regard various sectors, which sectors should be warned earlier than the other and how should the uh, consequences be measured. And we need the data of the various sectors like agriculture or forestry and hydrology. So how can we bring, the, how can we collect and acquire the data and, and define our thresholds and uh, limits in order to come to a categorization which then can be used for an early warning system, maybe linked to recommendations for uh, action, for reaction, for response. So what do we actually need as components? I'm going to go into detail for the first two components as to uh, an early warning system or recommendations for response. Uh, it's too early for the moment. So let's start with the first basic components. First of all, our motivation. Why do we need a regional impact-oriented dryness monitoring system for the state of Saxony? And which are, are our target groups? Our basic motivation, of course, is drought as an extreme linked to certain consequences in the various sectors, especially agriculture and forestry, as well as hydrology and water provision to the public. And therefore, it's useful and meaningful to deal with droughts and dryness monitoring. On the other hand, we have already observed dryness trends in the period between 1961 and 2015. We have a clear trend. The more red, the more orange, the higher the trend towards dryness and even drought. So there is a general trend to more dryness in springtime and early summer. And, for, and so we have as an empirical or as a database supporting our felt need for a regional drought monitoring system. 
On the other hand, we have uh, projections showing increased dryness, less precipitation in summer. 2071 uh, from 2071 to 2100 against a previous period. So we have a, a higher ensemble of statistical and regional models and a winter signal in, uh, for comparison reasons. So most of the models, as we can see, are located in winter dryness and increased dryness in summer especially in summer when it is relevant for agriculture and forestries. Again, another reason why it is useful to consider monitoring and the dryness for drought prevention or for response. As already said, uh, the degree of specificity was insufficient. This is a monitoring product of the European uh, Drought Observatory. I'm going to give you more details, but here you can already see we have one index with a quite coarse resolution, whereas this combined product is uh, more is a better for in terms of resolution. As to the target groups, the user groups, we have various uh, we surveyed uh, various team members of administration offices, also as to the terms and to the definitions of what is dryness, of what is drought, what data which database is used and can be provided to us for allowing us to evaluate the impact relevance, what index indices can be used, whether they have made already analysis in the past, which can be provided to us for further use. There's an increasing trend in literature dealing with dryness and drought monitoring, trying to establish the link between thresholds and indices, indexes. And one part of the survey regarded whether there is an actual need for regional drought monitoring. So do, do you actually need it? What would be the integration? And do you have a kind of a list of wishes what a tool, a monitoring tool should be able to provide? First of all, as to the terminology, dryness and drought, and when I spoke, I actually mixed that uh, because to me there are s it is quite similar. But I know other people have more strict definitions, individual definitions. Most of the people said, how do you define that? They actually said, oh, I then, and uh, after a while we asked, how do you see which is more frequent, which of the terms is more frequent? And in most cases it's actually intuitive. So you say dryness, dry period, dry year, instead of drought period and drought year, but it's different from sector to sector. And in the end we actually saw that drought is related more to the agriculture, to crops, to plants, to vegetation, and uh, also in terms of consequences. So dry is an anomaly. It's, it, mu it need not be extreme, but drought is actually a tr an extreme event. So you could say this uh, drought is uh, much higher and much intense than just dryness. For example, in terms of uh, arable capacities, also in terms of the consequences of so drought means higher loss of uh, harvest of crop. So, whereas dryness is just a condition, regardless of what the consequences are or could be, when trying to monitor dryness and droughts, so it's very important to not to lag behind. So, in order to come to early conclusions, to identify upcoming uh, droughts and consequences. Of it. This is a selection of interview results, interview findings, 
First of all, the, who, who was interviewed, agriculture, we had two interviews in forestry, it was one talk, one interview in terms of hydrology and water, we had three interviews but with, um, more, with several uh, partners, interviewed partners each time. We had an open item list with our questions and they were asked to give their opinion. Then we had questions from 1 to 10, uh, that means an evaluation scale from 1 to 10. What, is the pr what would be your priority for uh, dryness or drought monitoring? One would mean not meaningful, no priority but most were, were at least five or higher, gave uh, five or higher. So there actually was a need in our view, but they said there are other priority areas that are more critical. Very often the background was that they had already individual tools they considered to be sufficient or they said, okay, for our area, if there's a drought, we cannot do anything, we cannot uh, counteract, so that is why, why should we need that? It's, there's no way to respond. Then we asked them, what they, uh, how important they find a database, impact related database. In this location, uh, in a certain site, there was a dryness period or drought at, at that uh, point of time. Such a database already used for Europe and is used generally to make, to uh, perform and carry out studies in order to in, uh, in order to find a relation between the actual event and the evaluation. Most were rather open to the idea of a database. Other uh, uh, said that makes no sense, it doesn't make sense, or it's hard to set it up in a standardized way. You know, it's a lot of input and definition work. The question was, when having various uh, dryness levels, should they be linked to recommendations for action? Uh, several, uh, some said it's completely unnecessary, others said it's indispensable. So the motives, the reasons given for the lower priority was we cannot act, as already said, we know how to act, we do not need further input, we know what we are, we are doing and we do that already. Another question of us was how meaningful, do, how useful do you find our idea to use comparative years, so to have a kind of standard year and to make uh, 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 to show correlations, or uh, let's say 2015, the dryness period was similar to the dry period of 2003, just uh, for uh, to cite an example. And we also asked them how important do you consider a forecast or a prognostic function in order to look forward into the future in the next weeks or months? How will be the further, further duration of the dryness? And the pe people said, now when having a portal for dryness monitoring, then the future the forecast function is indispensable. Although everybody knew that there are uncertainties related to this, especially on the seasonal aspects. And the longer we go into the future, the higher the uncertainties. Which further needs or requirements, list of wishes, so to say. What should it be able to do this tool? So in terms of hydrology, of agriculture, forestry, for example, should it be general or more specific? 
It should cover the entire area of a Saxony. It should be rather simple, self-explaining. Should provide time series, not only maps, and with a selection of sub-regions, of part areas, partial areas, for mapping. The period should be selectable and and, and the GIS export function and GIS export function should be available and they should be downloadable, all these time series and graphics and charts and maps. And uh, another aspect was to integrate further data, for example, uh, large-scale weather situations, satellite data from remote sensing, radar data, in, in order to itemize and localize better. And even uh, soil moisture, soil humidity could be evaluatable. As to forestry, they would like to see an, a tool supporting them for assessing the vitality of uh, trees, for example, and, and a region-typic visualization or presentation of dryness risks should also be given. First of all, the actual condition, which regions of Saxony are more prone to uh, dryness and drought conditions, but also long-term climate trend evaluations in order to motivate and stimulate the farmers to uh, do their farming in a more adaptive way. Well, so let's, in order to summarize, I've just spoken about the motivation and the target groups, target user groups, and now I would like to uh, have a closer look to the index and the model at the example of existing portals. Which indexes do they use? How do, uh, what do the maps look like? And I selected the European system, the European Drought Observatory, the UFZ Drought Monitor in Germany, in Tezuko for the uh, Czech Republic, and in Poland there are three different systems covering a drought assessment and evaluation. The indexes uh, used by each of those monitors, we see that climatic indexes like the SPI are used, like in Poland and for Edo, and a soil humidity or soil moisture model is used in these three systems. In addition, vegetation indexes derived from satellite data are also used in some of the monitors. The target sectors are agriculture or climatology in general, in order to have a classification or general understanding of drought and dryness. As to the spatial resolution, we have 124th degree for Europe, and the German drought monitor has a grid of 4 by 4 kilometers. 500 by 500 meters is the grid size of the Czech uh, system, and it's variable in the Polish systems, because very often they are based on interpolated data from measuring stations. In the maps, we have a wide range of what is actually presented. I'm going to show you that later as an example of pictures. And in addition, some of the systems offer a kind of drought report. It's a kind of assessment or rating or an expert opinion. And that is done only for actual drought periods, so the current, a current drought, a given drought is assessed and evaluated as in Poland and in the Edo. And for the Czech system, there is a weekly assessment as to humidity, uh, moisture, and drought, dryness condition. As to the forecast, the prognostics, it was a wish 
uttered by all of the interviewed people for the EDO system. We have a kind of forecast for the next following days for the UFZ monitor in Germany. We don't have any forecast for the Czech system. There are two variants, a short-term forecast based on weather forecast data and a probabilistic forecast for the next few months. And for the Polish system, some of them have an integrated forecast module uh, between 3 to 20 days forward in the future. Ha let's have a closer look. This is the European system. There are three indexes used and a combined drought index or drought indicator. There are two ways to spell it out. So we have a three month time scale in the past. And then compared with the standardized climate uh, map. Uh, and a vegetation anomaly uh, can be shown. These three maps are combined in order to come to the drought assessment map. You have selections, you can uh, select the periods, so that means you can browse back in the archives. I did this in order to show you this, this data. We can zoom in and zoom out. And all of Europe can be regarded and viewed. This is the German drought monitor. This is more or less what can be found in the website. There's a paper behind. So we have the soil moisture in two depths, 25 centimeters and 1 meter. 80 centimeters are the two depths for soil humidity assessments. Then you can have a look at the maps. Downloading was not possible. I did not manage to do it, but I was able to uh, capture it from the screen. So that means the functionality is rather limited for this portal. However, I spoke to Andreas Marx, who is shown here, and he told me that uh, it is to be further developed. So I'm eager to know how it will work out. This is the Polish system, one of the Polish systems. This is uh, the system of the Polish Meteorological and Hydrological Service using the SPI and the EDI, the Effective Drought Index. One is based on the monthly data, the SPI, and uh, daily data is used for EDI. This is the map generated in the end. Maybe I didn't understand everything so well, so I did, was not able to find an ar uh, archives. And so I just uh, took the, the current, it's March, I think, it's not May, it's, yeah, yeah. okay, it seems to be March. So, a rather uh, limited set of functions, so far as I understand it, I cannot speak, uh, I do not speak Polish. The, the, the other Polish system is based on the climatic water balance, correlated and linked to agriculture. This is the climatic water balance. I tried always to use the same period. August 2015 was my choice. Here in the western regions of Poland, you see a clear dry dryness which can also be seen in terms of agriculture. These are potential, um, potential drought zones for, cro and you can uh, select the crops you wish to see. As a period, August. From August to September, this is the period here, a two-month period. So I've just been given a sign that time is uh, almost up. So in Poland we have three indexes, soil humidity, soil moisture index, 
and uh, various agricultural indexes, the SPI, uh, on various time scales. And the final system is the check system, or the, the, the last one I wish to show you. Here you have the soil moisture vegetation. You have a lot of uh, functionalities. You, you can look into the water stored in the soil in millimeters. And the drought intensity can be inspected and classification of the vegetation condition on the basis of satellite data. Blue is the variation from previous week. So that means uh, there was rainfall during the uh, last week. That is why it's a better situation. All the general drought remains. To come back to what I started from, I showed you various systems, monitoring systems, and how do they fulfill the expectations of the users. So users wish to have additional information on what they know already. I think they, that's useful for it. They wish to use it as an information basis f uh, in terms of decision making, so as an aid for the, uh, decision making, which crop to cultivate, uh, to grow, and so kind of recommendations. And a region differentiation should be added to what's already known, and also time saving. It should be time saving in order to avoid further individual analyses. The maps are intended for public awareness work, or for working on public awareness, and there is a general wish to accelerate responses. So, as already said, Oh, as I wanted to show you again, we have the standardized uh, precipitation evaporation index. In, uh, we colorated that with runoff data and discharge data. I'd like to show that for the, the Mulde River, after the, the two Mulde rivers flow together, you have the time scale which we use for calculating the drought index and these other months. Small catchment area, medium sized. Uh, catchment and large catchment area. In the winter month, you see that the correlations are stronger in, than in summer, and the highest correlations are found in a period of two to four months in the past. And the other actual levels are uh, river levels are reflected best. What we need is more studies in this area, correlation studies like the one I mentioned, to look into impact data, which drought index actually matches the consequences in order to come to an early warning system and maybe also to a regional drought management plan, and we need contacts, persons uh, actually working on that. In various municipalities, we, uh, there are already people dealing with that. Which thresholds do they use? Which are the indicators telling them, so now it's time to limit people, to, res uh, to impose restrictions, now it's time to... Take away restrictions, so all that is kind of a circle, the cycle, and uh, that's what people told us during the interviews. Such a system must live; it should be maintained; it should be further developed. Yeah, that's it. I thank you for your attention. Many thanks. We are quite advanced in time. So one question I say. Yes, Barbara. Good. We have time for one question. All the time is already up. As to the terminology, on the one hand, we speak about atmospheric dryness. Do you say soil dryness? Is both the same for me? Drought is always related to crops actually suffering loss or fading away in German. So. 
also phase effect, uh, we know about phase effects, the soil water content, will it remain, will it be maintained? So is this a counter effect? Do you actually uh, correlate this to the carbon footprint? So uh, how about the water contents and can we actually correlate this to climate change? Well, that's an important aspect, of course, but we have not yet uh, considered this. Frankly speaking, yeah, this is I use this gap internationally. We have this, uh, especially US index, which is uh, used globally. I know it's a quite uh, arbitrary definition, but it is uh, widely used, broadly used on an international scale, but in Europe, in Poland, in Saxony, it's not so common. This index is actually used, a lot of studies are made using this index for Europe. It is a self-calibrating promotor uh, index. Uh, it's, we know about arbitration, but it's a very simple soil water model, and we in Europe wish to have more complex um, indexes and, and models.